To say that Todd Phillips' new Joker film has divided audiences and critics would be a colossal understatement. Joker currently has a Metacritic score of 58, but an IMDb user rating of 9.0. Just a quick crawl across social media will uncover the heaps of praise the film is receiving, as well as the equal amounts of negative criticism towards it. However, none of the negative press that Joker is receiving has stopped it from drawing in an opening weekend of over $240 million at the worldwide box office, almost equal to what the third installment of the Dark Knight trilogy opened to. Just to put that into perspective, The Dark Knight Rises had an estimated budget of $250 million, while Joker had an estimated budget of only around $55 million. Part of what's made it such a box office success this quickly is undoubtedly the fact that all our social media feeds have been flooded with media outlets warning us about how dangerous and problematic the Joker is. This is a good time to note a spoiler warning ahead for those of you who haven't seen the Joker yet. The film is about Arthur Fleck, a dreaming stand-up comedian who suffers from undefined mental illness, including a condition that causes him to laugh painfully and uncontrollably out of nowhere. Arthur is very much in need of psychological help, which he's deprived of due to cuts in government funding. As the film continues, Arthur suffers from a series of setbacks and humiliations that gradually catalyze his fall into a violent and rage-fueled psychosis aimed at the system that failed him. By the end of the movie, amid a citywide mass riot inspired by Arthur's actions, Arthur has unintentionally become a hero to the oppressed population of Gotham. Amid random mob violence and societal breakdown, the Joker, as we know him, is born. The thing that critics seem to object to above all is that Arthur is not portrayed as pure evil. The film is told entirely from Arthur's perspective, and us as an audience are positioned to empathize with Arthur. Beyond that, the film has a clear message that while Arthur's actions are his fault and doing, we created an environment where someone like him can be born. And this is what media outlets consider dangerous about the film. When it premiered at the Venice Film Festival in August and picked up the prestigious Golden Lion Award, Time Magazine's Stephanie Zacharek denounced the film for its sympathetic portrayal of the protagonist, who could easily be adopted as the patron saint of incels. Since the film's release, a cascade of similar comments followed from critics who worried that its morally ambiguous and empathetic depiction of a psychotic killer could incite real-world violence, and that alienated young men would, like the riotous mobs in the film's closing scene, see the Joker as the film's hero. But humanizing characters who perform inhumane acts of violence isn't something new to Hollywood. Being offered a glimpse into the mind of a twisted protagonist is something we've seen plenty of times before. Disturbed characters such as Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver, Patrick Bateman in American Psycho, and Tyler Durden in Fight Club have all garnered critical and commercial acclaim, without sparking crime sprees amongst disaffected white teenagers. To go farther, Joker is not the story of Arthur's rise, it's the story of his fall. The film clearly starts with Arthur as a genuinely good person. He works hard, he fights through his mental illness, he cares for his elderly mother. No matter what he does, life beats him down, sometimes quite literally. His violent actions after are only cathartic because we've seen how this world has treated Arthur, not because they're actually admirable in any way. The film doesn't even play them as victorious. It shows nothing but a new, chaotic, disastrous world created by Arthur and his followers as he becomes the Joker. In a sense, a big aspect of the controversy predates Phoenix's portrayal of the character, and is actually linked with the previous depiction of the character by Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. In 2012, a mass shooting took place at a cinema in Colorado during a screening of The Dark Knight Rises. The shooter was reportedly a massive Batman fan, and media outlets at the time falsely claimed that he referred to himself as the Joker. James Holmes allegedly telling police, I am the Joker. He dyed his hair, possibly to look like the character in this scene. He also allegedly rigged his apartment with elaborate booby traps, a favorite weapon of the Joker, who gleefully executes elaborate, lethal crimes and was once described by the actor Heath Ledger as a murdering, schizophrenic clown with zero empathy. A report that was later deemed as false by the police who spoke to him in the first place. The association with the mass shooting and the comic book character is something that hasn't gone away, and understandably so. The movie is not an endorsement of Republican mental illness blaming that some outlets say it is. It's simply a depiction of something which could play out pretty accurately in real life. The Joker has quickly turned into a media scapegoat, a cultural influence blamed for the internal troubles of society. 
Think of how Dungeons and Dragons sparked panic in the 80s, or the way a genre of music was demonized after the horror of Columbine. Some will be so brash to ask if we believe that all who hear Manson tomorrow night will go out and commit violent acts. The answer is no. But does everybody who, who watches a Lexus ad go and buy a Lexus? No, but a few do. Marilyn Manson found himself right in the middle of a media firestorm, being blamed for that terrible atrocity. Well, they needed a, some sort of scapegoat because it's, it was something that was so shocking to America and the rest of the world at the time that they needed an explanation of why, and I seemed like an easy person to blame for it. And uh, I'm, I'm not surprised at something like that, but I'm surprised at the extent that they went to to really persecute me over it. While the accusations against Manson seem utterly obscene in hindsight, they aren't at all too different from the hysteria currently surrounding Joker. And while the film will likely benefit from the increased attention, the willingness to point the finger at fiction seems terribly misplaced, particularly when the fiction is art depicting something prevalent in our everyday politics, and has been praised by people such as Adrian Raine, a neurocriminologist famous for being the first in his field to study the brainwaves of murderers. As introduced by Vanity Fair, the revered British researcher devoted decades of his life to understanding what makes criminals tick. Rain himself said that the film was a great educational tool in understanding the genetic, social, and untreated medical conditions that can lead someone to commit acts of atrocity. If the film's goal was empathy, I'd mark that as an official success. In an interview with the Washington Post, Professor Kendall Phillips stated that, all this talk about potential real-world violence around the film is distracting from the opportunity to use this film to start a dialogue about such issues as alienation and toxic masculinity. Ironically, both of these issues are quite prevalent in media and social media discussions. There's no denying that there is a crisis amongst the nihilistic and alienated young men that Joker purposefully parallels. But instead of pointing the finger at art, perhaps media outlets need to point fingers at the root causes of people such as Arthur, and what we can do to integrate them into society rather than catalyze disaster. But that's all far more complex and difficult to overcome than a fictional comic book villain. Thanks for watching the video and be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, consider supporting us over on Patreon. It really helps support and grow this channel and you can get exclusive access to behind the scenes content, early access to videos, and you'll be able to vote on what video we release next.